Hello, everybody. What I would like to talk to you about today is a offering from uh, uh, Cadence on the HiFi DSP. Uh, what we have is generally a end-to-end -end, uh, software solution for both machine learning using uh, TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers um, and a middleware that we have been developing in the past few years that's recently been deployed uh, to give you a end-to-end, -end, not only machine learning solution, but also a system solution. When people talk about machine learning, the first thing comes in mind um, is almost, oh, computer vision. Uh, that is probably the biggest application for machine learning that takes a lot of compute powers. What I would like to talk to you about today is machine learning application in voice, anything with a microphone, um, with the popularity of, of uh, uh, voice assistants such as uh, Alexa, uh, Google Assistant, Siri, that's in your home, in your car, um, on your mobile devices, in your earbuds, these assistants have become very popular. The engine behind these assistants are multifold. Uh, a lot of them use machine learning. For example, the voice wake, wake word, voice trigger, voice recognition, natural language speak, speaking. Um, what people don't know a lot is speech enhancement, noise reduction, that's gaining popularity using, uh, by using machine learning. And also sound analysis, sound analytics, such as detecting your environment, your audio scene detection, detect um, uh, like baby cry, gunshots type of application. Uh, one application that's made is popular is the Pixel phone that gives you some ID um, when you listen to uh, music. So the trend is that this application initially all started going in the cloud. The trend is that depend on the, the privacy, latency, and availability of your network has driven more and more of the processing into the edge devices. I want to talk about a little bit about um, when people talk about you know availability of network. Example has always been used. For example, if you're driving a car, uh, you may not have network. Recently, there's something that happened, uh, probably impact all of our lives. Is um, the current situation we're all staying home. We're all um, trying to not to infect each other. Um, one thing that's found in China was that the elevators is a source of uh, infection. People touch the buttons in the elevator. So there has been a rapid development of the uh, voice command to control the elevator. And the study had found that in most cases, these elevators do not have access to any network. So in a matter of a few days, uh, teams of engineers in tech industry had developed solutions to the elevator that overcome one, there's network availability issues, two, the environment is noisy, um, it's in an enclosed space, so the noise is different. Uh, when the elevator goes up and down, it's a different type of noise. In a matter of days, um, a system has been deployed in Beijing, China, uh, that is capable of using voice control to control the elevator. And I'm proud to say that the system is using a HiFi 4 DSP. It's a, a voice uh, AI processor that's powered by HiFi 4 DSP that uses one of our uh, ecosystem partners solution that was able to deploy this solution. 
and many of these um, type of systems will be deployed all throughout China. So that's close to heart. So why Hi-Fi DSP? Uh, it is a leading provider for audio speech and machine learning applications. We ship almost uh, one to two billion cores per year. So the application has been used in the DSP, on the DSP in multiple fields. Um, for the most part, it's been in the voice trigger, voice command, and pre-processing and uh, speech enhancement. The, what we have found is even though the DSP is capable of machine learning application, to actually develop the solution takes a lot of time. So we're motivated to provide a solution so that we enable innovation without taking months and even years of, of uh, development effort. We have extensive product ready software solutions from Cadence and we have a very large software system that are innovating and providing solutions. And on top of that, we think that even though you may have individual solutions, but being able to put the system together, it's still a daunting task. So for some of the um, companies, the desire is that there will be, there should be a unified solution so that uh, we spend the time to innovate rather than spend the time to trying to clean the pipe. So we have a solution that help you to clean the pipe. Let's talk about uh, uh, conceptually what a uh, end-to-end -end solution would look like. So we all know that for, for training, uh, most, mostly you do the training in the cloud with almost unlimited compute power you go through iterations and you define your uh, topology of your network and you look at the data you train and in the end you get a trained model in if you do nothing from uh, what you get from the cloud uh, you get the parameters for your weights and you get a python uh, code and then you deploy that directly onto your device conceptually this will work if you have unlimited compute power uh, if you don't care about power consumption. But for the most part, if you try to deploy such network, it would not work on the edge device. So there's many challenges if you try to deploy the trained neural network on your edge device. Um, as many have mentioned that you have power constraint, you have memory constraint, um, the generated code may not run on your embedded device. Um, if you take all the work um, manually, you try to trim the network, you try to generate code uh, just to, as an example, just to generate C code from a Python code alone, that could take you many, many weeks, even months, just after you have already know that you trimmed everything just a matter of code. So there's the challenges for the edge devices is uh, not, a, not a small effort. So some techniques of how to reduce the complexity, reduce the model size, so it's suitable for your, for your uh, edge device. So we go through the training the way we saw in, in the previous uh, slides. After that, you get a trained model. From the trained model, you would want to prune your model, pruning meaning both uh, from the size of the model to the computation complexity. So you go through iterations to make sure your training, your, your pruning and your comp compression does not compromise your trained network accuracy. After that, you to put it on the edge device that has limited computational capability, 
you may want to, uh, and also memory constraint, you may want to further um, trim your, your model by quantize your, your parameters. That alone is another iteration process. Once you get it quantized to, um, as someone mentioned, 16-bit, 8-bit, even maybe binary, in which case you would have to check and go through iterations to make sure that your quantized network would still give you uh, satisfying accuracy. So after such trimming, you still have to go through a process of, uh, of generating code that based on the, the Python, mo most, most of the training framework are based on Python. So you still have to generate code, C code that your edge device can use. From that depends on how good your compiler is. Um, you can generate somewhat somewhat uh, decent code in most cases you would have to further optimize that to be able to fully utilize whatever engine you're using on your edge device in the end you still have to integrate your solution with your system so this manual process can take many many months of work Recently, uh, I think uh, this has been mentioned by Lindley um, that there is a movement from cloud to the edge, and there's the uh, tiny ML that's, I would say, in the front line of this movement. Um, the team at Google has developed what we call the TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers just uh, abbreviate as uh, TFLM in the rest of this presentation. It provides tools to seamlessly deploy your trained network, uh, mostly at this point is TensorFlow trained network into a C++ or C programmable edge devices. So for that, this was developed for tiny little microcontrollers, but the limitation of this microcontrollers is, is probably not suitable for most of these applications we have mentioned that you have, not only you have the um, voice recognition, voice trigger, but also you have to clean up your signal, clean up the environment, noise, um, Sometimes it's probably a multi-mic processing. So this is actually a very, very natural fit for the Tensilica Hi-Fi DSP. Uh, it gives you more processing power. It has many, many software solutions already available. So this is a natural fit. We see it as a bridge from trained network from the cloud into using the Hi-Fi DSP. So what does it mean by seamlessly deploy? So the concept of uh, uh, the TFLM framework is generally up till the train model, from there it deploys, it, it gives you all the tools to, this is the flat buffer um, that's known in TensorFlow Lite. And from there, there is a conversion tool that converts your, your, your trained model into, into a much smaller model that your edge device, device can deploy directly, that it has smaller model and C++ code that's ready to deploy. When you are ready to deploy, so you write, you would write your application as so, you call the um, TensorFlow interpreter runtime that's able to interpret this, this, uh, this trimmed model. And from there, um, there is a set of defined um, uh, uh, operators that's been e e evolving uh, quickly still. Um, and then you uh, deploy your 
TensorFlow-like micro model. And from there, uh, that's where the HiFi DSP um, connects directly into here. We have mapped that code into uh, the HiFi DSP. HiFi DSP can directly compile the TensorFlow uh, like micro model um, from the C code. From there, we provide two libraries. One is what we call the neural network library. Uh, the other library is we call the DSP library. So it solves both the neural network uh, based application as well as, as a, uh, the feature extraction such as FFT type of application. So it's a seamless integration with the system. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the optimized, DSP optimized libraries. We provide two libraries. One is what we call the MNLib, which is neural network specific, like your CNNs, your DNNs, not, not just the kernels, but also layers with, uh, with uh, um, uh, activation functions. Uh, we provide a thin layer on top of that uh, to integrate directly with TensorFlow Lite for microcontroller. Another library we do provide is the, what we call the nature DSP library. That's your traditional DSP functions that's been used uh, for many years. We, we've had this uh, many, many years and it's been used uh, in, in probably billions of uh, cores. Um, these are all optimized for all of 10 silica hi-fi DSPs. We have a family of, of uh, audio DSPs that um, scales from tiniest app, uh, device such as earbuds all the way up to you know, a bigger uh, automotive or smart speaker type, type of uh, application. The library supports all different um, uh, precision of SIMD and it supports the vector floating point. And it is framework agnostic, so it, uh, uh, it, will, it will work with any framework you would use. So we have um, done what we call a pipe cleaner using a example code from uh, uh, TensorFlow MicroLite. Uh, basically, it is a simple speech recognition application. So we take a signal, we recorded that, uh, we recorded uh, our own uh, uh, signal, and we that's the, the yes is someone uh, in my team speaking. Um, so you go through spectrum, uh, spectrogram, this can be malfrequency or just FFT, um, and then you feed that into your inference engine and um, notice that the two, actually the spectrogram, how you do the spectrogram and your inference engine are tightly coupled if you look at the parameters carefully. So how you define your network and how you define your feature extraction are tightly coupled. Um, so we were able to, um, to run this on the actual reference board from NXP that is, has been, um, it's sold publicly uh, so we just take the board and run the uh, TensorFlow MicroLite on, on the platform. Unfortunately, yep. we're not able to demo it today. Um, we, I don't have access to the board um, since we've been uh, not in the office for many days. But this does work. We have a demo. Yep. Peng, we need, uh, to, need to wrap up now so we can go to the Q&A. Yes. We so... Here's an example of a system integration that we integrate many different uh, components, including the keyword spotter that we just showed. And uh, with the uh, with, uh, uh, pre-processing capture render different components. To do that, we provide a, what we call a middleware for faster system integration. This is available. <coughs> we have um, manage the memory, manage the, uh, it can dynamically install, uninstall different components. 
these components can from, come from Cadence or from our ecosystem partners. So we provide this framework to make integration much, much easier. Um, so this is available uh, in open source. So anyone who has a Hi-Fi DSP can use this. Okay, let's go to the Q&A now, Yipeng. Okay. Good job for screen sharing. Just question then on, on, uh, on using Hi-Fi uh, for, for AI. Uh, you mentioned earlier, a lot, a lot of the applications tend to be about vision processing. Uh, you wouldn't run a, a vision uh, network on Hi-Fi, would you? Or could you do both that as well as audio? Um, it's primarily audio. If one desires, um, if one desires, you can probably run a small vision application on the Hi-Fi DSP. Uh, it, it is not. It is not uh, in terms of uh, in terms of neural network. It's not. Uh, it, it's not audio specific. However, the interface, the framework so far we have is more focused on audio. Sure, it makes sense that Cadence offers other cores that are more optimized for computer vision. Yes, so, so it's mostly the software that's provided for the different platforms. And also uh, remember for the Hi-Fi DSP, it's a more balanced DSP, I would say, that it has both the performance for the your uh, audio and voice pre-processing with high precision Mac and and a low precision Mac for uh, for machine learning for neural network um, especially that we have the high five five we introduced last year it's a very balanced processing however it's not a very heavy machine the um, Mac capabilities is 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 more suitable for audio sure sure and how well does TensorFlow Lite support the kind of neural networks you want to use for, for say, keyword recognition? Uh, it's a different type of model. It's not necessarily a CNN. You'd maybe use an LSTM architecture. So currently, the one we have deployed is uh, more of a CNN DNN model. Um, however, our neural network, uh, our neural network library provides. Um, provides uh, layers, uh, including LSTM and GRU, we have uh, very, very good performance on those. So we are not, we, uh, we, we provide not just the uh, uh, Mac itself, but we provide the whole layers. And uh, that, that makes the integration of uh, much easier. So how would that change the training uh, process then? It would not change the training process per se. So we look at uh, what networks are po popular for audio and voice implement uh, um, uh, application and solution. Then we make a conscious decision on what we actually go do um, and optimize both our DSPs and our software to work with the network. Okay. Uh, one of the audience questions, uh, some, somebody who may be familiar with TensorFlow Lite said that uh, it has a problem with handling sparse matrices. Uh, do you see that as an issue for Hi-Fi to, to run with TensorFlow Lite? Uh, we, so Hi-Fi doesn't specifically, um, doesn't specifically change how TensorFlow runs. It just runs it very efficiently. So Hi-Fi DSP, if it's, if it's a memory bandwidth issue, for example, sparse matrix, uh, so it, it basically whatever comes out, we make the most, uh, we make the most out of it. And the Hi-Fi DSP is capable of actually the, is for the Hi-Fi 5, for example, it is uh, capable of uh, compressing the, uh, when you do load, when you do load, it's capable of uh, of compressing the coefficients, mm -hmm. um, and all the Hi-Fi DSPs are are you can add a DMA engine to make the bringing in the data uh, more efficiently. Um, so for the most part, the trained model are, are sequential uh, uh, 
are, are, are sequential and uh, predictable way of, of bringing in the data. So using a DMA would be uh, leave it the, the, the problems. Um, you showed some, some options uh, for using lower precision quantization. Uh, is that something you're supporting uh, down to binary neural networks? So our DSPs support um, support uh, four bit, eight bit. Uh, if you if you have a one bit, if you have a one bit model, we're capable of supporting it. Not that we invent the quantization. Uh, we are actually looking at quantization methodology themselves, and we are doing study of of different uh, uh, type of uh, quantization and how it um, applies to our DSPs. But for the most part, we let the, um, the inventors of the network to decide. Uh, that's, that's under their control when they're running the TensorFlow Lite training. I'm sorry? That, is that under the user's control then, or does it automatically decide what the optimal quantization is? That's 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 under user's control. You can okay. use uh, you can use different uh, uh, different uh, quantization resolution, and the uh, the DSP is capable of of loading the uh, different resolution into the into the uh, computation unit. Okay, uh, there was a question on. Uh, could you give an example of, of power consumption for a keyword spotting application? Uh, <laughs> We have we have data. Uh, it's very very low um, for so many of the um, many of the uh, devices out there actually do use HiFi um, as the voice trigger engine. Um, so I can tell you uh, I don't have the data on top of my head, but um, I can say that on one of the earlier tablet that's using a hi-fi as a voice trigger engine. Um, if you don't actually um, turn on, it, it, so we had one in our office and uh, we would call the voice trigger on a daily basis and the batteries stayed up for over a month. So, so I would say the, the voice trigger um, power consumption itself for that device is probably uh, negligible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you gave an example during your talk about the NXP uh, evaluation board. Uh, somebody was asking about uh, any chips on the market that are using HiFi. Uh, could you say what that chip is? It's an a NXP processor. That's a NXP. It's, a, it's an RT600 series. It uses a um, HiFi 4. Um, this is public information. If you go to uh, NXP website, they have a community that's supporting the platform. Um, it has a uh, 600 megahertz Hi-Fi 4 um, that's capable of supporting multi-mic processing um, that support XAF. Um, so this is publicly available. You can buy the board uh, from the marketplace. And, and I think furthermore, I'll, I'll let the audience know, you can read all about that chip on, uh, in microprocessor report. We've, we've covered that. Uh, that design from NXP. Thanks, okay, that'll uh, that'll wrap up this session. Uh, thank you, Peng, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you later on in the in the breakout rooms.